A NASA probe is about to make history by flying closer to the sun than any spacecraft before. It's a mission that could transform our understanding of our nearest star. The Parker Solar Probe was due to zip past the sun for a flyby on Christmas Eve, travelling at more than 700,000 kilometres per hour. That makes it the fastest human-made object ever. The spacecraft is built to endure searing temperatures of nearly 1,000 degrees Celsius and brutal radiation in the sun's corona, or atmosphere. The probe will get 6.2 million kilometres from the surface, which sounds far, but it's extremely close in deep space terms, and scientists are excited. Launched in August 2018, the spaceship aims to collect data on the sun's corona and solar wind. It can help forecast space weather events that affect life on Earth. The seven-year mission is helping to answer questions that have long puzzled scientists. We're used to the idea that if I am standing next to a campfire and I walk away from it, it gets cooler. But this is not what happens on the sun. As we go from the surface of the sun, which is 10,000 degrees, and quickly move up into the corona, we find ourselves quickly at millions of degrees. So this is a, a fundamental question that drives not only how this star works, our sun, but actually all the stars in the universe. To withstand the punishing temperatures, the spacecraft is fitted with a carbon foam shield that's 11.4 centimeters thick and 2.4 meters wide. Parker will carry out its flyby autonomously because mission control will be out of contact with the probe due to its proximity to the sun. They will rely on a signal from the probe, expected this Friday, to confirm the success of the mission. The data and images collected during the flyby won't be available to mission control until Parker has moved away from the sun in its orbit, expected in mid-January. Keith Cowing is the editor of nasawatch.com. He joins us now from Washington, D.C. Hi, Keith. Good to have you on the program again. Now, we're just looking at those images. Um, let's talk, talk first about the speed. Why is it so important for this solar probe to move at, uh, we're talking nearly 700,000 kilometers per hour? Well, uh, to, be, to be simple, it's because it's the sun's very hot. Uh, what you want to do is be able to you know, blend together the ability to withstand the heat and get close enough to the sun to see the things that we need to see there, but not dwell too long to be, you know, fried. Because this, the spacecraft is actually going to do this again four or five more times. So it's sort of a balance between all those things. Right. And help us um, understand how exactly they're making this close approach. Well, this spacecraft was launched, as was mentioned in your intro piece. It's gone around the inner solar system. It's, it's come around the Earth. It's called a flyby, then around Venus several times. And each time you do that, you gain more speed. So it's sort of like going like this and faster and faster. Then it goes towards the sun. And then it does this a couple more times. It's a game of celestial billiards, if you will, or planetary dynamics. It's the only way to get it going this fast. And nobody's ever gotten anything to go, get even close to going this fast as this spacecraft is going. It's mind-blowing. It's not the first time uh, it's got close. Obviously, this is, this is much closer. What's the difference between what was found back then versus you know, what, what we're trying to uncover now? Well, we've had spacecraft that have been studying the sun for half a century, but every, you know, every one gets better than the one before it. Europe has a solar orbiter that's going around the sun, but nothing even close to this. And the idea is, because of the orbital dynamics and the hope that the spacecraft will survive, you want to make sure that when it gets there, the first couple of times, you can get some data just in case maybe the spacecraft doesn't perform according to specifications. But if that's okay, then you keep doing it and getting closer and closer and closer. So it's part safety, it's part pragmatism, and it's part, again, orbital dynamics. The way these things go around the inner solar system, they speed up every time they go by something. And what could this, mesh, uh, this mission, uh, how could this mission benefit us here on Earth? Well, if we had a, you know, I get these alerts every day for the solar weather. And usually, you know, you get more of them every 11 years or so because the sun has a cycle where, you, you know, the number of sunspots changes and the, the energy is higher and there's more flares. 
some of those flares can just go out into space and not bother anybody, but some can come right to the Earth. And if they hit in, well, the right or wrong way, depending on your point of view, they can disrupt satellite communications, electrical power grids. And given that our society now is so dependent on GPS and weather satellites and you and I talking over satellites and so forth, that the more you know about how these flares form, when they will form, how frequently, and what happens when they come towards us, the more prepared we can be for our fragile electronic technology to be able to withstand these things. It's inevitable we're going to have a bad solar storm one of these days. Right. We'll look forward to, to hearing more on, on, on that mission. Keith, always great getting your insights. That's Keith Cowing, editor of NASAWatch.com. Thank you. My pleasure.